Hey guys, it's Landon here today from Varmint Assassins, and today I'm going to teach you how to tie the three easiest flies, in my opinion. So, let's get to it. Okay, for hook, hook size, I'm just using a normal hook, size 16. Thread, I'm using UTC 70 denier my favorite thread. I use brown but you can use black too. You can use whatever color you want but black or brown is the most common. Cut the tag in there. Now we're at to here. Stop there. Get out your copper wire. Cut probably five inches. Five inches to be safe on a size 16. On size smaller, you're going to need less. Just place two wraps on the back of it. Then place, then get your wire up on top like that. Mine's a little bit over towards me on the side, so can't see it. I'm just wrapping close together. There's no spaces in between it. Over the copper wire, I wrapped over the end. And I'm going to wrap thinly back and then back to the top. I just do that to make it a little stronger. Then I'm going to wrap once on the, the bear hook and then hop up onto the thread like so you want to try to wrap so there's no spaces in between the wire You don't have to wrap as fast as me. I just tie a lot of these because I love them. And then stop about there. That's I'll actually backtrack one wrap. And then I like to put my nail right there and pull it forward. So then it keeps the wraps tight together but you can still pull it forward. Two loose wraps over the top, pull it down. Um, and since this is spiral wrapped, if you wrap and get your thread into the wraps, it'll pull your thread back and you don't want that. You don't want to cover up the shine of the copper wire. Pull it up. I'm still mostly a beginner, so I clip my thread. The pros helicopter it, twist it until it breaks off. I prefer to just scissor it, because my scissors aren't a billion dollars. And just slowly build up the thread base. It's a little tricky if you get your thread into the the wire wraps right there. You have to pull it out of the wraps before you get too entangled. So some threads some threads um are a lighter brown when you buy brown color. When I got this UTC color is like really dark, so I'm not. I would usually, if I had my lighter brown thread, I would sharpie it black. Little trick I learned. You can change any color to black. 
so I just sharpie it black, but this is pretty dark, so it's okay that I leave it brown. Once you build up a substantial head, you don't want it too big. You just want it bigger than the body. Since I covered up my thread on top, it has like a hump on top of its head. I think I'll build up a little more. Okay, and then wrap to the hook eye. Come in with your whip finisher. Two whip finishes. And clip the tag end flush with the thread base. And that is your classic brassy. You can tie it in different wire colors to imitate a lot of different uh, nymphs. So this is a classic, easy to tie nymph that I, I personally love to tie. Okay guys, our next fly is a zebra midge or a black beauty. They're called either of them, but so I'm still using my brown thread on this one. Gonna put I put a very small this side size 16 so with the brassy usually tie them very small on zebra midges. Don't go above size 14. A size 14 would be big. Okay, once you got your bead on there, start your thread. This one's a little bit trickier than the brassy. Still pretty easy. Quick tag in close. And I'm using a curved hook on this one. You have to on um, zebra images, it's just something you need to do. Wrap down until it starts to point downwards. I'm gonna get my small size. Use green. You can use a lot of different colors. You can use the classic copper, you can use silver. Most people use silver. I actually am a fan of the green wire color. So, tie it in one wrap. Then, just like the brassy, slide it on top. And then make a thread base on top. Okay, guys, sorry, I had to stop the video. There was someone at the door. No. So, making a gapless, so there's no spaces in between it, thread base. Then I usually keep my tag end from going over the bead because then you have to clip it. I just get it so the tag end is like right there, like you saw me do. Make sure it's all the same size. And then right near the bead, start to build up. Because you want it a natural smooth body. Uh, right now it looks like my thread's just going underneath the bead. And that's what it's doing. It's stacking up inside of there. It'll just feel like it's endless before it stacks up. Okay, I'm about stacked up. I'm going to stop. I'm going to have to wrap more after I do my wire. I'll start to wrap evenly spaced apart. Like that, up to the bead. Then wrap carefully on top of it. 
three times and then you're good to clip the end. And then two. Sorry, I'm just getting. Sorry that you can't see it. I'm just used to tying so I can see the butt end. So I clipped the butt end as close as I can, and it, it's okay if it sticks out a little bit because it usually helps keep the bead there. And once you have it built up and wrapped your wire, you're gonna come in with your wet finisher. Sorry, don't do that. Messed up and my whip finish slid down onto those wire wraps. I know I'm supposed to be your teacher here, unless you're just watching us for tips. But I messed up. And that's probably the first time I've done it, not kidding. Careful, make sure it doesn't slide down onto the wire wraps again. Um, pull tight, then clip as close as you can. Clip your thread. And then I'm gonna get some head cement and bodkin. I don't have the best can of head cement. I wanna get one, one with the dripper bottle. Head cement is really bad. Oops. I have horrible head cement. Mine is the stuff I have is really thin, and the tip, the dripper tip it comes with is horrible. Okay, that's amount. That's the amount you want. Just a little small drip. Then you want to put it right where I put my whip finishes. And then rub it along there and let go of it. And it slowly soaks in. Just get it in there. And then let your, unless yours is like flash dry, let your head cement dry for five minutes. You've been blowing on it, blowing on it. A bit and that is your zebra midge or black bead you can also tie them without a bead head it looks like a little dubbing head but my favorite personal favorite is brown body with the green wire and silver head these are great for fishing um, for fishing as nymphs and you can also tie them with a, you can tie them and have them below a stimulator. Stimulator float on top and have a second string with Black Beauty on the bottom, but you can get more hatch specific. But these are great flies. Okay. Okay guys, our last fly, final beginner fly is the San Juan worm. Um, this one is also extremely easy, so I'm going to start my thread. I take back what I said earlier, this is the easiest fly. Stop there. This is flies commonly, this is a size 12 I'm using. You can also use a curved nymph hook, it's all preference. This fly is commonly tied in red, but I like to use my little worm colored chenille here. You want small size, unless you're using a bigger hook. Then you want to measure three shank lengths long. Shank is the long, the long part of the hook's on. Two, oops, 
when you redo that, sorry. One, two, three. Clip it. And since they usually come in the spool, which makes them bend like this, usually get pull it to straighten it out. You should straighten out over time. And then cover up your tag end there. And then tie it in. You want to make sure there's a shank on the back and the front, a shank length on the back and the front. And then sparsely wrap far apart. Once you get to there, build up a thread base here. This is true with all flies. All fly tires have a different method of tying them. You'll watch a video, maybe you'll watch another video on the San Juan worm that is completely different than mine. All fly tires are different. And once you get to the end of your thread base, wrap three times. This is the tricky part about this fly. Or worm. Whip finisher. One, two, three, four. And as you can see, as I whip finish, the end of the worm goes through that triangle thing I have right there. And slowly edge it, tighten it. So if you tighten it with the uh, knot too close to the front, it will jerk, the, it will like bend this this way and you don't want that. Um, gotta get, pull out more thread. And tip of the worm goes through the triangle, has to go through. And if you're tying red, you definitely want red thread. If you're tying a red San Juan worm, you definitely want red thread. And I sh probably should be using tan thread, but I don't have that yet. Clip it flush. That's your San Juan worm. You can, since as you can see, this is loose right here. You can even add some head cement. My good old horrible head cement. There goes a drip. Don't get this head cement. Whatever you do, don't get this head cement. It's horrible. Okay, get, that's about the standard size drop for head cement. Try not to get it to fall off. Then you just want to put it right where that whip finishes. Spread it along. Just like that. And then put your cap on your head cement. And then, just like the other fly, the zebra midge, you can blow on it and then just let it sit for a minute to five minutes and then your head cement should be dry by then. And there you have your San Juan worm. As you can see, I tied it in a little bit weird. I have a little bit more on the front end and it should usually be the opposite. You want a not, not a lot more, just a little bit more on the back because this right here is the heaviest part. This chunk right here is the heaviest, so you want more on the back. I'm going to trim off a little on the front. Alright, thanks for watching, and I'll come back with more fly tying videos, and hopefully some score hunting.